two officers responded separately to a domestic disturbance near Central and Baseline in South Phoenix. The victim was combative and it turned into a brief scuffle. At some point through all this, the family dog was shot and killed, and the moments later, the unarmed victim was shot too. Killed him for no reason. They just shot him. The emotional mother of 29-year-old Daniel Rodriguez. The two were having an argument yesterday when she called 911. Officer Richard Crisman and another officer responded. She gave them permission to go inside. I said, don't hurt him. Whatever you do, don't hurt him. And not even a minute later, they, we heard the shots. They went in there, I gave them permission to go in and they killed him. According to police, when the officers entered the home, the 29-year-old told them to leave, saying they needed a warrant. Officer Crisman then pulled out his gun, put it to the man's head and said, I don't need no warrant, followed by an expletive. Then it turned into a heated argument and scuffle. The victim was tased twice. Crisman allegedly shot and killed the family dog, then shot and killed Rodriguez as the two argued. It's extremely unusual for our department uh, to have this kind of a situation. Chief Jack Harris tried to calm nerves today as this killing sent shockwaves through South Phoenix and the department. We will investigate this thoroughly and we will do everything possible to make sure that we have the facts and that we take appropriate action based on facts. Chrisman was booked on aggravated assault, but many are expecting that to change. Yeah, they're thinking that the uh, charges could definitely be upgraded. Officer Crisman has been on the force for nine years. The chief says he's had a few disciplinary problems in the past, but nothing that would rise to this level. The other officer who was there and watched this all happen told investigators that as he watched this, it made yesterday, quote, the worst day of his life. I'm Andrew Hasman, Fox 10 News. Good day, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Tuesday, October 12th, 2010, and I am Darko. Welcome to this uh, War on Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty uh, news segment here. Uh, new listeners, please visit www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Um, I've been pretty much plugging this and beginning my videos now because I never have. <laughs> so I'm um, sorry for listeners who've been listening for a while now. Um, make it kind of redundant, but uh, this is for those that are just, uh, for the first time, checking out some of my videos. Um, you can learn more about me on the website and uh, check out some of the most recent videos along with uh, other things such as uh, uh, new, different news uh, sources. And uh, if you want to, this is totally up to you. I'm not asking for it, but it's there. Um, you can donate. So... <laughs> Anyways, this is from stlouistoday.com, and the title of this is Pine Lawn Police Chiefs Shot Probed by County. Uh, we just watched a video where the individual's dog uh, was shot, and then he was shot. And this isn't the first uh, case that this has happened. Uh, I've covered articles in the past year since I started Global Government News uh, uh, where there was incidences in which police officers shot uh, an owner's dogs uh, when they weren't a, even a threat, um, they just now they just come in and shoot your dog. And if you have a problem with it, uh, if you have a problem with them coming in without a warrant, well, they just shoot you. And then, uh, but don't worry, um, uh, the order of the fraternal order of police will protect their own. And uh, uh, maybe he'll actually he may actually get commended, like out in Pittsburgh, where um, they beat up an honor student, pulled his dreadlocks out of his head, and deformed his face. And then uh, he, the guy got promoted and praised for doing it. So um, here we go. It says, Lewis County police have launched an investigation into a shot fired by Pine Lawn's police chief last weekend that did not hit anyone but raised questions about his conduct during the incident. County prosecuting attorney Robert McCulloch on Monday asked county police to look into the gunshot. Quote, it's rare for the prosecutor to ask us to investigate another police department, said County Police Chief Tim Fitch. The police chief in Pine Lawn, Ricky Collins, fired one shot at a man who allegedly fled the scene of a seatbelt checkpoint Friday night. You like that, guys? A seatbelt checkpoint. Because the government cares about your safety. No, the key word is checkpoint. Just like when you go on uh, tollways, those are checkpoints with cameras everywhere and x-rays uh, scanning you and radiating you and all the other gadgets that they have. 
around those. Those are checkpoints, and you're paying for them. Collins has said the driver swerved around a police cruiser near the 4400 block of Rosewood Avenue to avoid the checkpoint, striking an officer and racing off. Collins said he had an, he and another officer then pursued the suspect about a half mile until the driver stuck or struck a light pole along Bircher Street. Collins said he chased the man as he ran from the car, and when the man made a motion as if he had a gun, Collins fired one at him, one shot at him. Uh, it says Collins missed, but the man was arrested nearby. No gun was found in the man or in the area. Who's down here? It says Friday's gunfire wasn't the first for Collins. In June 2006, Collins and a Pine Lawn police officer captain fired a shot at a driver at a sobriety checkpoint in Pine Lawn. In that case, the driver was struck in the forearm. This next story is carried by the Chicago Sun Times and it's titled "Dark Feels Horrible About Raid on Elderly Couple." And this is. Uh, Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart said Monday he feels horrible, about, horrible and personally apologized for scaring an elderly couple when sheriff's police officers broke into the wrong southwest side home in a mistaken search for guns and drugs. Yeah, so um, if you have some illegal plants and you have a firearm to protect yourself, well then, hey, that just warrants um, Gestapo SS to come and through your house with, uh, you know, Guns drawn and guns, you know, blazing and shooting your dog and all that good stuff, right? So even if this, even if it was the right house, it's still kind of messed up, right? Because what you put in your body is your responsibility. It has nothing to do with the government or any other person or citizen. Neither does your right to defend yourself. The Thursday night raid was a rare and ill-timed embarrassment for Dart, who is running for a re-election November 2nd while simultaneously gearing up to join the crowded field vying for the, to replace Mayor Daley. Well, you know what? I'll tell you right now, Rahm Emanuel, very good chance that he's going to take that uh, position. Moving down here, it says, We talked to the family about making sure they were compensated appropriately. They've been very understanding, and I, uh, I can't thank them enough for it, but you obviously... Um, are not happy at all when these things occur. You feel horrible for the people. Over the years, the sheriff's office has been a political time bomb for occupants of that office. Um, and I'm going to go into this because that's just, just a bunch of corruption and crap that just really is a waste of freaking time. Full probe vowed in captive Britain's death. And uh, this says, um, Kabul, Afghanistan, U.S. and U.K. military officials have started what's promised as a thorough investigation into the death of a kidnapped British aid worker who may have been killed in air by U.S. special forces rather than, as originally stated, by our Taliban captors. Uh, Lyndon Norgrove's deaths, our death has reverberated through the corridors of power from Kabul to London to Washington where President Barack Obama Hussein Obama expressed condolences and uh, pledged to, quote, get to the bottom of what happened during the deadly raid, and I'm sure he will. NATO said initially Norgrove was killed by our captors. On a Monday, however, Alliance officials said new information indicated Norgrove may have been killed by a U.S. grenade. Moving on, it says a uh, Pakistani-based British militant may have worked for U.K. police report. Um, a Pakistani-based British al qaeda militant who was part of a group plotting the Mumbai-type uh, attacks in Europe before his possible killing in a drone attack may have worked as a police community support officer in the UK, raising fears that Osama bin Laden's group may be trying to infiltrate the security system here. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it's implying. The uh, next article up is Taliban captures U.S. base in Afghanistan. Taliban militants have claimed that they have driven U.S. troops out of a military outpost in Afghanistan's northeastern Kunar province. They also said that the Americans fled the military outpost in Kunar's uh, Marara uh, district in helicopters on Monday. Senior Taliban commander said the group is now in full control of the district where the outpost is located. I wonder if that's because they're, uh, they're um, heading uh, their operations into Pakistan. Somalia and Yemen, the first, a, the first a failed state and other on its way, will be the next battlegrounds in the struggle against terrorism, Western analysis warn. Now that just means that they're going to carry their war on liberty um, into Yemen, which, you know, I've mentioned in videos before, that's, that's pretty much their plan, trying to uh, link up their... Um, intelligence patsy, the underwear bomber who was working for them, uh, basically, yeah, to tie them 
with uh, some bunk ass uh, uh, a cleric or teacher for um, the underpants bomber and Yemen. So, yeah, they're going to tie it into uh, into Yemen, moving to Somalia, and says uh, U.S. forces are allegedly waging secret wars in both these impoverished tribal lands that command strategic shipping lanes. Um, so you can see what's going on here, just like in Southeast Asia with shipping lanes, and then you have that's what I that's why I say the whole thing about Somali pirates is shipping lanes. And I don't know why people leave comments about, oh, it's not. It's about Somali pirates. Well, you know what, dude? You need to do your history and find out how Somalia came about, why these pirates exist, and what they're doing, and why they're doing it, and why the whole thing is insane about a couple little flimsy, poor uh, pirates with maybe some machine guns and a skiff boat out in the ocean uh, taking over full freighters with, that aren't able to legally uh, protect themselves. The whole thing's a scam, so... Um, before you leave your comments, like I said, just I recommend just doing your own research on it before you do that. Um, but you're more than welcome to leave your comments and say, no, it's the Somali Pirates. It said, uh, oh, and lastly, I just want to put out here, too, um, the U.S. actually um, funded the Yemen government about, uh, I would say within the past five months. They gave them a crap load of money, a buttload of money to uh, fund their army. So when they do that, that basically means that they're buying out that government, that corporation, and that they're going to start occupying it and waging war against liberty. And so uh, here you go. I, this is, to me, uh, uh, pretty much propaganda. This is how the West perceives uh, what Asia is saying, which is to back off. Um, China tries to calm nerves over Asia sea activity as if they did something wrong. So as China worked to calm the nerves of Tuesday among Asian neighbors jittery, jitters over a, in its recent attempts to assert greater control over disputed waters while its rival Washington stressed its national interest in keeping those seas free for commerce. Chinese minister, non-traditional security issues uh, pose grave challenge. China, no threat to anyone. Chinese defense minister Liang, uh Guang Li says uh, in Hanoi Tuesday, non-traditional security issues pose grave challenges to regional security and China's defense development is not aimed at challenging or threatening anyone. China's defense development aims to ensure its own security and promote international and regional peace and stability, Liang said in a speech. Um, China pursues a defense policy uh, that is defensive in nature, and I actually believe this. He told the gathering which opened in a Vietnamese capital. So basically you have like Clinton over there. I posted an article too um, by The Atlantic, I believe, about a month ago. And she was, you know, pretty much claiming a stake in the Southeast Asia part um, uh, part of the world, saying that, you know, uh, this is our area as well. And so... Um, and then they started carrying out, the U.S. and the West started carrying out drills over there by North Korea and Southeast Asia. And um, so the Chinese basically reacted. I mean, that's what the U.S. would do if the Chinese started to uh, uh, say, um, you know, hey, th you know, this is our area over here in, in the Bahamas and the Caribbean and, and the Pacific and Atlantic. This is our area, and we have our own interests here, so uh, we're just going to come over here. And then the U.S., tries to uh, send some boats out there and say, you better back off a little bit there, buddy. And then, uh, you know, that's being that's being provocative. Next story is up from Spiegel Online. Kyrgyzstan has become an ungovernable country. Um, so please check out that article. I'm running out of time here. No right to lawyer during police interrogation. That is right, folks. Supreme Court, if you live in Canada, you don't have a right to a lawyer during police in interrogation anymore. So... Arizona Governor Jan Brewer slams foreign interference in immigration lawsuit. This is totally ridiculous. And a new twist in the fight over Arizona's immigration law um, on Tuesday asked the federal court to allow foreign, disallow foreign governments from joining the U.S. Department of Justice a lawsuit to overturn the law. That's right. Other countries are suing a state. Uh, Israel to Iran. Time's up. Fin Finance minister calls for naval blockade within two to six months. Uh, Israeli cabinet passes loyalty bill, Arabs angry. Uh, Israel's cabinet approved a bill on Sunday that would require a law, uh, new non-Jewish citizens to pledge a loyalty oath to a Jewish and democratic state, uh, press TV. Israeli military to hold drills in Al-Qaeda. 
Four civilians killed in Afghan black. Attacks killed 10 civilians in Afghanistan. U.S. defense firms lead in government contracts. The mayor-elect shot dead in Mexico. Thank you everyone for joining me. Take care.